Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I've got a cool card that features this awesome full panel die. I love full panel dies because they make creating an interesting card front a snap, especially if you grab a little watercolor and go. So shall we? Let's jump right into it. I will have all of the supplies I'm using listed below, as well as some supplies listed on my blog too for some extra cards that I'm going to show you at the end. But I'm starting out here just scribbling some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers onto my little Art Impressions palette. And I've got an oversized, well, not an oversized piece, I've got a full size sheet of watercolor paper. This is B watercolor paper. I use this paper a lot. And I wanted it to be big because I want to make sure that I get the color where I want it and have enough room to sort of play around with the placement of my die rather than do the die cut first, which wouldn't really make sense at all now, would it? <laughs> but I digress. All I'm doing is splotching down some color. Now here's the beautiful thing about this type of painting. You don't have to be very good to do it. I am I'm not very good at watercolor but I can potch down smushed color. Well, maybe not with the best of them, but I think you get the drift. It's just a very forgiving process and an easy way to create an interesting background. And all you need to do is follow the rainbow order and it's kind of hard to mess up. So once you get your color down, it might be a little light, which was the case for me. And I took a look at this and thought, well, you know, I want it to be light and soft, but not that light and soft. So you just come back, scribble some more color down, and keep adding it until it looks about right. And once I had the color down, I set this aside and let it dry naturally for about an hour. I could have hit it with my heat tool, but I thought, you know what, I don't want the paper to warp too much, so I'm gonna set it aside, be patient, and then come back to it. I busted out my brand new metal shim that I'm going to use here on my die cutting plate, because that herringbone full panel, it's pretty intricate. See all those little openings? I find that a die like this works really well with a metal shim. It is a good investment if you like intricate dies. Now, I'm going to tape this in place and you can see why I wanted to have all that extra painting just because I didn't know, I didn't know how I wanted to frame it out, but I thought this looked pretty good. Now, I'm going to do this off camera and the reason why is I have to put a lot of torque into the turning and it shakes my whole table. But once I ran it through and I went back and forth a couple of times, you can see I tapped on the paper and a lot of the pieces just fell right out. So the shim really does its job. And then for everything else that doesn't, just get a little piece of foam and just push it through with a craft pick, just like that. Easy peasy, and the cut is fantastic. Those metal shims, they are worth their weight in, well, metal, metal shims. I'm grabbing one of the sentiments from the Herringbone Sentiments set, and it is full of all-purpose sentiments from holiday to encouragement to uh, sympathy. They're all designed to fit inside that little diamond. So I'm powdering this up really well because it is watercolor paper and I really don't want powder to stick anywhere other than where I'm stamping. I'm gonna ink it up with embossing ink. I like to run my little Swiffer over my misty door just to give nice smooth pressure. And I'm gonna hit it a second time. Again, possible because of this fantastic stamping tool. I want it to have a really good impression. So now I'm gonna take my silver powder and just sprinkle that on. And because I used the embossing magic powder to prep the area, ah, oh, the powder just falls away and only sticks where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more. There's so little going on really on this card. I wanna make sure that this stamping and embossing looks as good as it can. And now I'll get my heat tool nice and hot and just bring it to the paper and melt that silver powder. And just like that. The clothespin helps keep my little fingers from getting burned. I think that looks great, merry and bright. Next, I'm gonna add foam tape to the back of the panel just like that to give it a bit of dimension. And I'm gonna go ahead and prep my card base. This will be a top folding card, five and a half by four and a quarter USA2, and that is Nina Solar White, 110 pound, nice sturdy card base. I like to tape my card bases closed with a little purple tape just so they don't pop up while I am aligning my panel. 
I'm going to take the backers off the foam tape and I'm using my score buddy to help me line up quickly because I have trouble with this, but when you use the score buddy, you just press it all into the corner and just like that, mm, it's all lined up and there's a nice bit of dimension casting that herringbone shadow. I think it's really fun. To finish off this card, I'm gonna use some Fashion Silver. This is from Fun Stamper's Journey, and I love these during the holiday. I, I hoarded them last year, and I'm busting them out this year for holiday cards. Just gonna use my craft pick, place them around the card front. A nice odd number of five, and that is my finished card project. It's really simple, but you've got that nice wash of color and that cool dye pattern. Now I'll show you another one. Here's one I did with a different set of Zig Clean Color. Again, same idea, light wash of color, and I just put on some gold sequins and gold powder. The third card, I thought this would be nice for encouragement. This vibrant color came from some Pink Fresh Studio liquid watercolors. But again, three different card looks, one herringbone dye panel, and a sentiment set that is full of all-purpose sentiments. That dye, mm, loving it. I will have all the information for the other cards as well on my blog, and you can find that link below the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I would love to have you become a subscriber to my channel, and I will see you back here again with another card project soon.